Hey guys, Samsung announced the Galaxy Note 10.1 yesterday, so I thought I'd make a quick video here checking out the specs and seeing how it compares to the Note 10.1 that we had previously. So the first thing we'll talk about is the design, so we'll pull up a picture here of the original Note 10.1. And you can see it's got that pretty standard Samsung design, all white, all plastic, very glossy finish. And you know, the problems with that is it's very shiny, it's very kind of slippery, and it's also an absolute fingerprint magnet. So you can see that there, it's got that very similar shape in white and black. And if we pull up the new Galaxy Note 10.1, you can see it's taking a lot of the same design cues from obviously the new Galaxy Note 3. And you can see the back is again that kind of faux material where they want you to kind of think it's an imitation of leather. And it does apparently feel like leather as well and you can see that stitching around the edge. So it's very similar design to the Note Fablet which is pretty obvious because it, considering it's still the Note range. So yeah, let's go ahead and check out some specs. So we'll start off with the dimensions here guys and Samsung have managed to make the 10.1 2014 edition thinner and lighter. That is kind of like the two checkpoints every company does when they kind of upgrade a device. You can see the original Note 10.1 on the right here, the new 10.1 on the left. The original Note 10.1 came in at 8.9 millimeters. The new one comes in at 7.9, so it is thinner. They've also made it lighter. The original came in at 600 grams. The new one comes in at 535, so they can tick off those two things. Thinner and lighter is done. But let's move on to some more interesting specs. So the screen, that's pretty much the biggest thing on a 10.1 inch tablet, right? The screen. So the original Note 10.1 came in with a resolution of 1280 by 1800. That really isn't very good anymore. We've easily surpassed that on seven inch tablets. The 2014 10.1 over here, you can see, has a much higher resolution, 2560 by 1600. That is super high resolution. That's the same resolution we have on the Nexus 10 tablet. And you can see the pixel density has also increased. 299 versus 149 so the screen is just hands down better it's also super clear LCD technology rather than the PLS TFT it's not super AMOLED like we see on the uh, Galaxy Note 3 but you know you're not going to get a super AMOLED screen that big and be able to keep it cheap so the screen will be pretty damn awesome let's move on They've also put in 3 gigabytes of RAM compared to 2 from the original and this is what we saw on the Galaxy Note 3 as well. It looks like most high-end Samsung devices are going to have 3 gigabytes of RAM from now on and probably all the Android other Android devices will have 3 gigabytes as well because when one company does it the rest of them just follow suit. 3 gigabytes of RAM is it you know it's always a good thing to have more RAM especially with something like TouchWiz which is very kind of which you know it's a it's a RAM hog it just eats up all your RAM and stuff slows down so an extra gigabyte of RAM hey I'm not complaining right moving on what else do we have here they've done the uh, standard upgrade on the camera from 5 megapixel to 8 you know these are just checkpoints every company just goes through um, moving on what do we got here also uh, another thing to mention about the camera is it can shoot 1080p at 60 fps now it says LTE model here the reason it's saying the LTE model is because the LTE model has a different chipset to say the 3G model or the Wi-Fi model it has a Snapdragon 800 which is capable of shooting 1080p at 60 fps so just take that into account it's also got a secondary 2 megapixel front facing camera that's able to shoot 30 frames per second 1080p. That's an upgrade over the 1.9 megapixel camera. Not much of an upgrade, but it's an upgrade. It's running the latest version of Android 4.3 Jelly Bean, for now at least. And the chipset you can see here, like all Samsung devices, it's going to come with two variants, an LTE model and a 3G model slash Wi-Fi model. It's kind of confusing. The LTE model is going to use the Snapdragon 800 because it actually supports LTE. And it, you know, both of these are very strong. The other chipset is the Exynos Octa-Core and, you know, they're both really strong. Both have the new next-gen uh, GPUs. The Snapdragon 800 has the uh, Adreno GPU. The Exynos... I can't actually remember which GPU the Exynos one has, to be honest with you, but it'll be good enough, trust me. And yeah, so they're both going to be super strong. You can see it clocked all the way up to 2.3 gigahertz, possibly. They might downclock that a little bit, depending on what they think is possible with the heat and the surface area and stuff like that. But 
the Adreno 330 GPU should be able to push all those pixels 2560 by 1600 and it should be able to push them smoothly. We'll have to see how well it does in games. But um, yeah, we'll move on to the battery. So you can see here the original had a 7000 milliamp hour battery. The new one has an 8220 milliamp hour battery. That is quite a substantial upgrade in battery. So an extra 1220 milliamp hour battery. That's going to give you some battery life. Now that may kind of be balanced out by the fact that it's got a super high resolution screen and a stronger processor and just a probably a brighter screen and a better screen. So take that into account. We'll have to see how well the battery life actually lasts or how long it lasts. We, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But um, it's a big upgrade on the Galaxy Note 10.1 in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. Are you going to get one? Is it going to sway you away from possibly the new Nexus 10? Peace out.